Hey guys, how you doing? Today I wanted to go over the actual way that a gas furnace works. The sequence of events that needs to happen for the furnace to start blowing warm air into your house. We'll start at the thermostat and go all the way to the blower turning on, forcing air into the rooms of your house. That's coming up today on Fox Family Heating and Air. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. First, I wanna give fair warning to anyone watching this video that is not already an experienced technician in the HVAC industry. This video is for educational purposes only. Fox Family Heating and Air does not recommend anyone other than a licensed professional to start opening the furnace up and trying to diagnose the failure going on with your system. There are high and low voltages that can shock a person. There are also lots of moving parts that can damage body parts, namely hands and fingers. The furnace also produces hot surfaces within the furnace compartments and around the housing, which can cause severe burns. There's an actual flame that's produced by the ignition and startup of a gas furnace too, which can cause severe burns and damage to the person or property. When your house reaches a point where the heat needs to come on to keep you comfortable, a series of components work in a certain order to produce that heat. The thermostat is the first part in that sequence that engages to make the furnace work. There's 24 volt power at the R terminal of the stat already. Within the workings of the thermostat, 24 volts closes a switch at the W terminal. That signal is sent to the control board back at the furnace. The control board is a printed circuit board that has various switches, resistors, and terminals that act as kind of like the quarterback of the heating system. It calls the plays as they need to happen. The control board has a terminal block with screws on it to hold down a set of thin, low voltage wires coming from the thermostat. Typically, the colors of these wires are red, yellow, white, green, and blue. The wires are gonna be red to R, yellow to Y or cooling, white to the W terminal and that's heat, green wire typically goes to G and that's the blower motor, and blue goes to the common or C terminal. Take note here though, the wire colors don't matter here. There's still copper on the inside of the sheathing. So if you use a brown wire for R at the control board, then brown needs to be hooked up to the R at the thermostat. Once the control board receives the signal from the thermostat to turn on the heat, it tells the inducer motor to come on. The inducer motor is a major component that removes the carbon monoxide from the flame of the gas furnace. It draws the spent gases into the metal or PVC flue pipe, which transfers those fumes from the furnace to the atmosphere through the roof line. You may have seen the metal pipe sticking out of the roof on top of your house in the wintertime and exhausting a steam into the air. That's the exhaust that we're talking about here. Next is the pressure switch. The pressure switch is a safety device that proves that the inducer motor is on and doing its job properly. If it's not, the sequence shuts down and retries again. The pressure switch is actually measuring the suction the inducer motor is producing and sends a signal back to the control board letting it know that startup is working good so far. Meanwhile, other low voltage safety switches are sending a signal of all clear back to the control board. There's a couple of rollout switches and a high temperature limit switch that have to prove to the control board that all is well there too. The wires leading to the rollout, high limit, and pressure switches are usually all wired in the same series circuit with each other as a safety control. If any of these switches sense anything wrong with the startup of the heating system, the sequence stops and retries again. Next, three components engage in order to light the flame and prove that it's lit. When the pressure switches and all the other safeties tell the control board that all is well, the board starts up the ignition sequence. First, the board sends a signal to the igniter. This could be a hot surface igniter, which glows a bright orange, or a spark igniter, which produces an arc between two metal forks. I have a video that discusses why hot surface igniters fail that might be of use to you as well. Whether the igniter glows, sparks, or not, 24 volts is sent to the gas valve, which opens the diaphragm inside of it. It opens, allowing natural or propane gas to flow on 
through the metal burner assembly. The gas now flowing through multiple orifices in the burner assembly reaches the igniter, which causes a flame to ignite and burn in a controlled fashion straight into the firebox or heat exchanger. For the purposes of this video, we'll call it the heat exchanger. Crossover channels within the burner assembly allow the gas to flow from the first burner to the last one, where the flame pours over a thin metal safety rod called the flame sensor. The flame meeting the rod creates a millivolt DC signal back to the control board that allows the gas valve to remain open. No flame being sensed means gas is flowing uncontrolled throughout the furnace cabinet, which is not good. A delay occurs at this point to allow the heat exchanger to warm up so that cold air isn't sent through the duct system and into your rooms. The heat exchanger is a hollow metal box with individual chambers. The flame pours into each chamber, warming the metal to an extreme temperature. Once hot enough, air that flows over and around the metal box warms quickly from room temperature to about 100 to 140 degrees. The temperature is set by the manufacturer and must be closely adhered to to keep the system operating safely and to proper specs. After this delay is finished, the blower starts up and sends forced room temperature air over the metal heat exchanger at the correct speed. If the air is sent over too fast, the air entering the room won't be warm enough. Too slow of air or not enough air and the system gets too hot. Too hot means the high temperature limit that we discussed earlier will open telling the control board something's not right. So this blower motor really has to be dialed in just right. Here are some things that can happen when the furnace isn't starting up correctly. Now, these next troubleshooting tips are not all inclusive and are not to be taken as scripture that what's going on with the furnace that you're working on is the problem. These are general problems only. No power to the board. If the unit's plugged in correctly and the breaker at the main panel is in the on position, there should be power to the furnace control board. There's also a transformer that can go bad between the outlet and the control board, and they can and do fail regularly. The board with proper power can send the high and low voltage signals that it needs to in order to be the quarterback and run the plays. So we have power thermostat, but no inducer motor running. Low voltage power is sent from the control board to the R terminal at the thermostat. Assuming you have 24 volts there, the thermostat closes the W switch uh, which now has 24 volts being applied to it. If the 24 volt signal is getting back to the control board's W terminal, then the control board is supposed to send the high voltage signal to the inducer motor. If voltage is getting to the inducer motor, but it doesn't run, you likely have a bad inducer motor or a capacitor for the inducer motor. If you're not getting voltage to the inducer motor from the board, then you likely have a bad control board or faulty wiring connection between the two. Let's say you have power, a thermostat, your inducer motor's on, but no ignition. If the inducer motor is running, the igniter should start glowing or sparking. The gas valve should open, allowing the gas to flow. The gas flame should cross over to the other burners in line, and a signal should be received at the flame sensor, telling the board that everything is good to go. As with many components in troubleshooting, if the part is getting power, but it's not operating, that part has likely failed. If it's not getting power from the control board, it's likely a bad board. I have a great video on why control boards fail for more information. Let's say you have power, thermostat, inducer, ignition, flame, and the sensor, but no blower motor. If everything works as it's supposed to, except the blower motor hasn't turned on after the flame ignited, and after about a minute or so, something's going on there. If the motor is getting power, but not working, the motor or its capacitor may have failed. If the motor is not receiving power from the board, the board is likely bad. Not all blower motors have capacitors either, especially on newer systems made in 2020 or later. So we have power, thermostat, the inducer motor is running, we have ignition, flame, the sensor, and the blower motor is running, but the system shuts down on high limit or rollout. Lastly, if the blower motor comes on and the system starts heating, but after a few minutes or even several minutes, the system shuts down, the high temperature limit switch may have opened, causing the system to retry again after the heat exchanger cools off. 
If the chamber that houses the heat exchanger gets too hot, this high limit switch will shut the system down. This could be because of a few things. First, we have to check the blower speed settings and make sure they're correct. Next, the air filter could be dirty. Ductwork could be too small or even collapsed. Or the evaporator could be clogged with dirt. Check out one of my most popular videos that shows what kind of problems a dirty evaporator can create. All of these items have one thing in common, not enough airflow passing over the heat exchanger, which causes the inside temperature of the furnace to go over the recommended settings established by the manufacturer. Although many things can go wrong with the gas furnace, sometimes in combination with each other, not much else can go wrong. I sure hope that this answers some questions that you had about troubleshooting a gas furnace. Be safe out there, use your head, don't get hurt. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.